YouTube as it going the goat house is back finally through our position ranking videos here's the last one ranking the safeties uh we have all kinds of nfl draft content on the channel definitely more to come so i gotta do my big board my guys more videos uh and draft is only a couple days away so i'm excited about our live stream as well if you can join us for that like subscribe to notifications on follow us on twitter that is very very important link pin in the comments for that and our sponsors. Uh, so I rank, if you didn't know, I rank slot defenders separately. It's all I, how I have always done it. Uh, so in the corners video, I did go over the slot defenders, but just a reminder that Brian Branch plays, you know, 80% plus of his snaps and will in the NFL in the slot. So really he's more of a slot corner. Uh, so I do have him at one. I am very, very, very high on Brian Branch. I love his tape. Uh, the slot position is taking over today's NFL it's very important he's a dominant piece there so we broke this down in more more in depth in the corners video where the corners and the slot defenders were also separate of course I just don't like calling him a safety because when he does play safeties in the box he you know doesn't have too many snaps there um, and I have other guys uh, Jamie Robinson from Florida State, I like him as a slot guy. Anthony Johnson from Iowa State, I like him as a slot guy. Um, so those guys will be categorized with, with the slot defenders. Uh, so in terms of the safeties, uh, I, have an Antonio, I have Antonio Johnson of Texas A&M at safety. He actually played in the slot a bit, but he played strong safety and he played free safety. Uh, you know, it's weird. If, like Sometimes Pro Football Focus has the snap counts, and there won't be too many at free safety, but I don't think they're counting when it's a split safety look, when really, you know, they got deep halves or deep quarters, they're really they're both free safeties. So he, he played he played all the positions there, um, and I do like him as a strong safety at the next level that also can play at other spots. So that's the good thing about him, uh, the Texas A&M defender. So round two grade on him, very physical, you know, big time hitter around the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. He's very lengthy for his size as well. We talked about how versatile he is, but yeah, we've seen him play slot, strong safety, covering the flats. Uh, seen him play free safety. Uh, again, when when they when, when AM was in cover four, cover two, sometimes you know they need another, they need two safeties in the back end, so they drop him back. So he, you know that's not where his best plays at, but he can do it. Uh, definitely a playmaker around the line of scrimmage, making big time plays. Um, usually they're hits. Uh, and so he's it kind of goes along with him being impressive versus the run. I, I just really like him as a strong safety uh, in in a zone scheme. I definitely prefer prefer him in zone over man. Uh, I, I really li I talked about I really like a fit in a cover three. I talked about it on Twitter a little bit cover three scheme where he's playing strong safety can play him in the slot a little bit. It seems like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be an excellent fit if they don't get a guy like Brian Branch in the first round who uh, you know, would play more of that slot role, and Johnson would kind of fill that sa strong safety uh, hole because they lost some safeties there. But, um, yeah, zone defense, strong safety, also can play in a slot. Yeah, better near the line of scrimmage than downfield. You know, his downfield tape isn't bad, but it doesn't really stand out big time. Sometimes he's a little too aggressive where he'll kind of whiff, you know, miss a tackle. Uh, man teams could pass on him. He's definitely better in zone on tape than man. Uh, underwhelming testing at the combine and the pro day, mainly with those explosive drills like the broad jump in, in the in the vertical jump, where you expect your safeties, your big time safeties. When he's an explosive player, you expect it to be a little bit better. Uh, but he's my number one player that I'm considering a safety. Uh, number two, I like JL Skinner uh, quite quite a bit. Not really being talked about in terms of, uh, I guess the one of the top ranked safeties even though there are probably people that like him but I kind of like him all over the place strong safety you know uh, in the slot even but he he kind of has the body type uh you know the length yeah the body you know ridiculous length 6'3 and has the arm length to go along with it um you know has you know some of that range and speed you know he kind of all that he kind of has that to play free safety his play there just isn't as good yet as you know maybe the strong safety position uh but i do like him his tape was really fun like a guy you really get excited about uh, the length really shows shows up you know very very physical you know getting in the backfield making plays making big time hits i think he's equally effective against the run and the pass you see him sticky in coverage and uh making those pass breakups got his hands in the ball quite a bit um, and defends the run very well. So I think he's kind of e equally effective there. I think a playmaking type player here, playmaking type safety, uh, has the range to play, like we talked about, he has the range to play deep. 
Um, you know, he's kind of got to put it together, though. Some teams might like the idea of him at free safety. The tape fully isn't there yet at that spot. But you can see he's going to be capable of doing as upside there. Uh, and I definitely can see him manning up on tight ends because he can cover. Uh, and yet he has the size to man up on those tight ends. So I, I see teams using him in a lot of different ways. And he really can sh- he really can showcase his physicality out there, which he did at Boise State. So I'm a, fa- I'm a fan of his. Uh, definitely takes some bad angles, and that kind of goes into maybe why he can't play free safety because his, his angles are off. You know, he'll misjudge, I guess, kind of the angle he has to take to get to the ball, uh, defending the boundaries, depending on the, si- the sidelines if he's trying to get over and help the corner, um, you know, or if you're in cover two, you got to help out over the top, you know, on the sideline if the ball is put uh, somewhat downfield. So, you again, he, he has the body type, and there's some parts to his game where it says free safety, but he is a little raw there, definitely needs some work. The angles definitely need to be better. Uh, and he was injured during the whole pre-draft process, so that was tough too because he's interesting too because he's a guy, you know, in terms of a 40-yard dash, I could have seen – you know, running in the four fours, or I could have seen him running like four sixes, like because he's big, big guy. He's got some strides. Maybe he's not moving super quick though, so he's a little tricky to figure out how fast is this guy. But he looks fast enough on tape, so that, that's good. But it was tough that he was injured and couldn't participate in the combine. Uh, number three, I went maybe really bold here. I'm putting Riley Moss at safety, and I'll do this every year. I'll move some guys around. I'm I'm pretty and I talked about Keely Ringo. I like the idea of him maybe playing safety, but I ranked him at corner still because he's been a corner and he has the the measure, measurables to play corner and he has upside there. So most likely he's going to play corner. Riley Moss, I actually think a team will take him to play safety. Uh, maybe that's 50-50. It's a little up in the air. Maybe some people will say I'm crazy for saying it's 50-50, but I you know and it could be a nickel corner. That's a possibility as well. I just like the idea of him at safety here, so I'm going to rank him there, um, which is not out there for me. I'll do that. I'll definitely do that every year. I moved some guys to linebacker, off-ball linebacker this year, uh, but the Iowa Iowa corner was very, very, uh, very productive, very impressive on tape. You know, mainly with his instincts. You know, being able to read the quarterback, jump the route, jump the you know, jump the ball, make the play on the ball. Uh, you know, so it was just a big time playmaker, especially in zone coverage, which Iowa runs, which they had him in some man too, but he's just definitely better in zone. I see the upside at free safety, uh, for the reasons I kind of explained and there's more that are going to go into it. Um, but yeah, being able to kind of sit and see the quarterback, read it and be able to get downhill and make a play on the ball. Uh, and he can tackle, he can get downhill and tackle as well. Uh, those things say safety. They also can say corner, which he's played pretty well at corner. Um, and he was another thing. He was really good athlete uh, at Iowa, and he showed it showed at the combine as well. But <clears throat> you know, corner is what he knows, but the, he doesn't really have the size, mainly the length. He doesn't have the length, and you know, I guess the press as well. We didn't really see enough press. Is he as good? You know, is he as good as he needs to be in press for for the next level? How is he in man coverage? Of course, he could go to a very heavy zone defense and play corner. They still want those guys to press a little bit, and they still want them a certain length, you know, 30-inch arms. Is it going to cut it for most teams? So that's a tough part as well. Um, so based on his strengths, even though he plays corner pretty well, based on his strengths and based, based on his weaknesses, I think he could be a really good safety. I think that's where most teams would play him. Uh, man teams, I think, will definitely pass. Uh, and then, yeah, he, he showed he can kind of get turned around and man, kind of trying to focus on the footwork of the receiver, kind of can get turned around, keep his back towards the ball a little too long. So I like him in zone. He's going to go to his own team. Uh, be curious to see where they play him. I think he's more like, I just, maybe it's bold, bold take. I think he's more likely to play safety or in the slot than outside corner. And it kind of sucks because he's really good at outside corner. Uh, but just be, because of the limitations, I suppose, uh, but I think he'd be a really good safety. He's not even a safety right now, and I'm ranking him as a top three safety in the class. So uh, high hopes for him. Hopefully the uh, team, uh, the right team, gets him. A, and, and you know, even if he plays corner, like he, I mean, he can be solid too. So we'll see. Uh, number four, I got Jair Brown, which is a tough projection here, but I do like him at strong safety and free safety. The next level, he played more free safety at Penn State. I like him a little bit more of strong safety though. 
Uh, but he was a big-time playmaker, kind of everywhere, getting his hands on the ball, just making big-time plays, especially in the back end, but in the you know making a play on the ball, but near the line of scrimmage, kind of blowing up some plays as well. Uh, you know, very versatile, can line him up in different spots, but then coverage versatile as well. Uh, I would in different. I would prefer him in zone coverage though, but he can run pretty much <clears throat> any type of zone coverage. We've actually seen Penn State run a bit of cover six. Um, which I thought the Eagles did a really good job of last year, but Jonathan Gans with the Cardinals. So could this be a Cardinals guy? Do they need a safety? Hey, maybe if Buda Baker's on his way out, this could be the replacement there. Uh, so that's something I thought of as well. Uh, impressive versus the run, you know, will fly up, make a hit, um, make a big time hit. Uh, he knows how to attack downhill pretty well. And again, pretty impressive in zone. He is a tough project projection though, because he played majority of his snaps, like a good amount of his snaps uh, at free safety. But then you question, does he have the speed? Does he have the length? Does he have the range, the proper angles to play free safety in the NFL? And you you could doubt that a little bit, even though he had some good play and production uh, at Penn State. You know, very underwhelming at the combine with it showing off his speed, you know, and, and it doesn't really have crazy length. Um, you know, and a little off with, the, with his uh, angles sometimes as well. Um, so does he project more as a strong safety? I, I think so. I think so. But that's why he's tough because most of his play, and he even had good moments, was at free safety. Is a team, you know, so it does you know does that mean he's got to adjust a little bit? Um, you know, his play, his play style, where he plays, and he's 23 years old, so it kind of makes him a little raw for 23. But there are some eye popping moments that makes you want to put him, you know, towards the top, you know, towards the top of the safety group. But it is a little bit risky of a guy here. Um, because maybe he won't have the same exact role as he did at Penn State. And number five, a guy that I thought I would like a little bit more than I end up liking, but I still like him overall. Very f freakish athlete here in Quan Martin from Illinois. Free safety and slot. He mainly played in the slots, but I'm ranking him with the safeties. I like. I, I like. I'm projecting him better as a free safety, but he can, he's going to do both, and he can do both. And somebody might just play him in the slot. It's possible. You know, I'm not sitting here saying, like, for sure somebody will take him and play him more at safety. Somebody might just only put him in a slot. I don't think I really agree with it, but that might happen. But he's an absolute freak of an athlete. Fast, explosive, quick. Uh, you know, so he has solid play in the slot and at free safety, which is good that he's versatile. Uh, impressive in man coverage. Uh, I thought he was effective versus the pass and versus the run. See him getting downhill and making play, plays in the backfield or near the line of scrimmage with the, with his tackling. Uh, you know, just super quick. Um you know, his footwork. Uh, but that that's why he's tricky as well. He mainly played slot corner, and he had really good moments there. But there was times on tape where, you know, when he has to run with a guy, uh, you know, that he's covering, and his back backs turns towards the ball, which will happen if you play defensive back. Uh, and, and that's kind of where he struggled to kind of – when he has to locate the ball to kind of figure out where it's at, and he would misjudge the ball quite a bit. Um, you know, and he would kind of rely on his, his athleticism and stay in front of his uh, of his man, the receiver, or whoever it was, uh, and then try to yeah rely on his athleticism and try to jump and make the play there. And he got beat quite a few times because of that. Um, so you know, and then look at him at free safety. He you know he can attack downhill. He's super quick, super speedy, super explosive to attack the ball when it's in the air. Uh, and you kind of there's way way less of the back turn towards the ball and having to get, you know, turn your body around and make a play on the ball where that's where he struggled. There's way less of that at the free safety position as well as you're just head on towards the quarterback, towards the ball, everything's in front of you. So my thinking there is that he sh we should get less of those negatives, uh, more positives at the free safety position. But Illinois, they're very smart with their defenders. They moved him from safety to slot, I suppose, for a reason. Maybe more teams would play him in the slot over free safety. I just, you know, how good is he there in the NFL, you know, at that spot? There's a lot to like, but uh, I, I would like for him to play both. I, I like the upside for him more actually at free safety. So he's a little tricky. Uh, it depends on who gets him and where they use him. So it is it is a little tricky. And, and again, you know, he, he was of safety and he kind of he switched to slot. Uh, you know, and it's still kind of like, where is he better? Where do we put him? Where does he have to learn in the NFL to play? And he's at 23 years old. So it still kind of feels like an upside guy uh, at 23. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's just, you know, it's something. Uh, I'm talking about some other safeties. And, and once again, I do rank the slot guys separate. It's what I've always done because slot guys are actually more corners 
then even though people rank him as safeties, well, unless you got a you know a big nickel, some sometimes uh, teams are taking these big big safeties and putting them over tight ends, but. Those guys usually get reps at safety as well. Um, so guys like Jimmy Robinson, I have ranked with the slots and pretty high. I think he's a third round guy, the Florida State guy. And he could play safety, but I just really like him in a slot. I think he's very good. Uh, and, and then Shamari Connor from Virginia Tech, I, li I like as a big slot guy. Um, and, and then Anthony Josh from, Johnson from Iowa State, who is a slot corner. He played outside corner. He's a slot corner. So those guys are ranked with the slot guys for me. We'll have a spreadsheet with all my rankings for everybody's use during the NFL draft. You're going to you're gonna have to follow us on Twitter for that. But rest of the safety side, uh, we got two Illinois guys back-to-back. Sidney -back. Brown, which I want to like more, kind of like Quan Martin, too. I want to like even more uh, because he's big, big playability, like high motor, all over the place, freak athlete as well. Um, you know, good in man coverage. You know, strong a man covered strong safety uh, is a flat is flashy guy. You, you want to love him. He misses a lot of tackles though. Kind of comes with the guys that fly around a little too much. You know, too aggressive. He will miss throughout his whole career quite a big bit of tackles. If he didn't have that, if he didn't miss those tackles, I mean, we we'd be talking about you know top top tier safety here. Uh, you know, so it's a tough one uh, there, but very solid. Jordan Battle is interesting because I think it's a safe pick. He's not super flashy. Uh, maybe you wish he was a little faster. He's not slow, but you wish he was a little faster, you know, on the field. Um, you know, not really a man coverage guy, which isn't a big deal, but um, you wish he was kind of a little bit more. We did see a little bit more of the flashiness two years ago rather than this last year, but he is kind of a safe pick for the right scheme. I think a team, I, I, I'd say, you know, split safety to me is is uh, cover four and cover two. I, I prefer cover four. Um, because cover two, the safeties have to get all the way to the boundaries, to the sideline, uh, you know, to help sometimes. And does he have the speed to get out there? I, I say yes, but maybe not all the time. You know, it's actually a tough role there. Cover four, where he's split and he gets, you know, quarters of the field, that makes sense to me. So I, he needs a specific fit, and if he gets that, he can be really good there. Like, he could be very solid, um, you know, because he's a smart player. Pretty good tackler as well. So I don't see him going to a man team. And Christopher Smith from Georgia. Tough one as well because he kind of had a rough outing at the Combine and the Senior Bowl. I didn't really like the looks that I saw from him. Senior Bowl where you get more work of like actual football, um, you know, uh, practices, drills, the game. And, you know, they had him at single high a lot and sometimes in man, and he just did not look good. And it just you knew he wasn't in the right role there. Uh, it was different than what he did at Georgia. Uh, and then he was pretty slow at the combine, which was surprising too, because he flies around the football field. So that's tough. That kind of moved him down. But the tape overall is still pretty good. If he goes to the right team, the right scheme, um, I like him. I also think he's a, you know a, a zone corner, and I'd prefer a, a split safety, a split safety uh, zone defense there. Uh, I, I think cover two could work for him, so that would that would make some sense. But definitely don't want him a man like him, in, you know, as a zone guy, uh, and he can play single high uh, at times if you need him to. So because he is a free safety, but I like the way he gets downhill and hits as as well. So just kind of an underwhelming uh, pre-draft process for him. That was tough. Daniel Scott of California, who uh, had some freaky testing numbers from the combine, so very athletic, uh, pretty good free safety with range and playmaking ability can. You know, can man up in the slot as well, and can play the strong spot. So you do you do like that? He's got kind of got the versatility there. Um, and there's been some buzz on him lately. A little inconsistent. He is the oldest in the class. That's a tough part too. Um, he's already you know 24, going to be 25 this year. So that, that's a little tough. But yeah, I mean, there's not too many like consistent free safeties in this class or solid free safeties in this class uh, that could also do more. You know, I think he he's one of them. So. That that you know that's good. Had a really good outing at the combine. Uh, then Quindell Johnson, who really isn't getting a whole lot of talk right now, uh, from Memphis. Uh, you know, big body safety. Uh, I I see him making plays from the free safety spot, kind of just reading the quarterback and jumping routes. Uh, but I really like the way he plays as kind of a big uh, you know big guy you know near the line, a big safety near the line of scrimmage where he can man up on tight end. So he's kind of one of those guys, kind of like a. You know, I guess today's big nickel, uh, which is a slot guy, but he, I also do like him at free safety. I think you mix. I think you have him up there if you need a man up on a tight end that's lined up in the slot. All right, you, you know, it's kind of you you change that up uh, pre snap. You know, Quindell can get down there and cover him, but you know he could be a free safety. I, I, I like uh, 
what I, I saw from him at, at that at that position as well. Um, you know, so there's kind of a lot to his game for a big body guy. You know, had flashy moments. He is inconsistent as a tackler. He misses some tackles. Um, he flies around a little too much, and he is very tight. You know, when he has to kind of open up and run or turn, um, that that's that's his big weakness. There, he's a little tight in that category, a little, little slower in that category. So, but I do like him. He's not really being ranked high by many. Um, it, it kind of reminds me. I mean, it's a little different. But Joshua Williams, who the Chiefs drafted last year, he was kind of like, you know, is he a safety? Is he a corner? We're gonna like him manning up on tight ends. Uh, but we do like his coverage downfield as well. And he is more of a corner, but it kind of reminds me of that, a guy like that, that, yeah, yeah, you're going to let him be a playmaker, you know, uh, but when you need somebody to man up on tight ends, he could be that guy, you know, big body guy there. So, um, yeah, another guy that just missed a cut, uh, you know, was Jason Taylor, the second from Oklahoma State. Uh, another free safety that I like his range and has some big playmaking ability too. So it's tough not ranking him. Honestly, you know, there isn't a big-time player, unless you're talking about considering Brian Branch uh, in, in the safety group, like a big-time player, but there's some depth, you know, once you start get, getting going down here. Like, I mean, there's guys that I didn't rank that I like. Uh, and, again, there's guys that I like a lot that I'm just ranking with the slots because I think they're going to play 90% of their snaps in the slots because that's where I think they're, you know, I'm not going to be 100% right on every single guy and where he plays. But curious to see what happens to Riley Moss now since I'm ranking him very high as a safety. You know, most people have him ranked in the – in the range of cornerback 12 to 15, I got him ranked third safety. So, and I've heard from others. It's not just me. I've heard from others that he could translate to safety. So it's just not me just pulling this out of nowhere, but I, I only do it because if I, if I see it and I see it and I see other teams thinking it too. So that, that's really why I'm saying it. Um, so I'm kind of excited about that. See where he goes. Got to be his own team, but uh, yeah. So I'll have a spreadsheet. Make sure you follow our Twitter. Uh, Twitter su subscribers have already had this spreadsheet, but um, it's still a work in progress. A spreadsheet of all rankings for hundreds and hundreds of prospects with round grades next to them, and they're in grouped in each position group there. Um, make uh, some adjustments to it leading up to the draft. Of course, it doesn't. no adjustments happen after the draft, uh, and I always have it for you guys. So follow our Twitter. I will give you guys the link for that, and it will be ready on Thursday getting ready for the draft. It's more useful for day two and three probably, but it's always ready for you guys heading into uh, day one. So really exciting stuff to come here. Hopefully you can join us on our channel. Like, subscribe to notifications on. Make sure you follow that Twitter link, pin in the comments for that and anything else that you are looking for. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.